most generational theorists place millennials as persons born 1980 to 2000. So they're 16 to 36 years old um, right now in 2016. Um, so 16 to 36 year olds, uh, millennials. If you're in the cohort, according to these generational theorists, raise your hand. Nicely, barely, Moses is barely there. Oliver, Emily, Cynthia, Brahman, nice. So this is Canada. Uh, in January 2015, last year, January, said this group is the single largest generational cohort. It surprised me. I didn't know that until I was doing research on you for this. Uh, single largest generational cohort at 9.8 million Canadians or 29% of the Canadian population. Within 15 years will comprise 75% of the workforce in Canada. Um, Someone says to you, well, the reason why there aren't a lot of young adults in our church is there's just not very many of them. They're all working three jobs. Yeah, 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 <laughs> point well taken. Um, so um, I, want to, I want to dispel quickly some uh, ideas. So when I talk about millennials, I'm thinking about 16 to 36 year olds. Um, I think there are two, I think there's, a, there's a, a sort of two poles right now and millennials are lining up between each of these poles all across the spectrum, right? Um, the first one says, I have tentatively crafted a meaningful narrative for my life that gives me a satisfying identity, but there is a slight problem. Some conflict, some tension, some ambiguity has arisen in my narrative, and I need a gospel-infused narrative to work through this ambiguity. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm talking to you. Right? That's one stand. Okay? Across the spectrum, and the spectrum, <coughs> I think, stands, uh, this, uh, excuse me, other. I do not have a coherent narrative, and I have no idea how to construct one. In the meantime, though, I need to survive the day, work, and or school, and nurture relationships. Can you provide something I cannot do for myself? A Christian framework and meaning for my random, episodic life. I think those are two narratives that I keep on hearing over and over again, and most young adults then find themselves across the spectrum. What do you think? I like the second one. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Liz says she likes the second one. It seems very real. Thank you. Paul, what do you think? I like the first one. Good. What, what, might be the, um, what might be the conflict, the tension, the slight problem if the person's more on this pole? For instance, for young adults. I can't get my romantic life in shape. There it is. Martha's like, oh, yeah, I've got a decent job. There's possibilities here, but I'm trying to date. I've been on Match.com. I've been on, on the, I just can't find a nice woman or a nice man to partner with. And that's a problem, et cetera. So yeah, there's something, you know, relationships are falling apart or something, right? Um, I think these two poles line out. What do you think? And by and large, people find themselves in the midst of this. What's interesting is, as I've taught this and talked about this, um, rec most recently, about four weeks ago, to a class of adults, uh, talking about millennials and how we at Village Presbyterian Church reach out to millennials, care for them, love them. Uh, several, of, several of the adults in the class said, actually, um, that, the second one, that's me, and I'm 62. And uh, the, yeah, the first one, I'm more the first one, actually. So I don't think this is just unique to millennials, but it is part of where they are in their life. Does that make sense?